I'm Chris Shattuck, and this is how to add and manipulate pages with the menu system. In this video, we're going to be talking about registering and overriding paths, we'll explore render arrays, and we'll also use placeholders and arguments. In a typical HTML-based website, every page has its own file. So if you go to the About Us page, for example, that would be its own file. Same with the Contact Us page. In Drupal, however, every page runs through a single file, and that file is the index.php file. There are several benefits to using this type of pattern. Because everything is routed through a single page, if you need to do something to take the entire site offline, you can do so by just changing that single point of entry. For example, if you want to do some upgrades to your Drupal site, you can do that. You'll see this type of pattern a lot in web applications, and it's called a front controller design pattern. And basically, it's just routing all page requests to the application through a single source. The way that Drupal determines how to respond to a different page request is it looks at the path. And in Drupal, the path is anything to the right side of the domain name plus any subfolder that Drupal might be installed in. In this example, my Drupal site is installed at the base directory, so it's just the domain name. So the path would be admin slash modules. And even though it looks like this is a subfolder inside of Drupal, this is actually just a little magic happening on the server level to make the URL look clean. What this actually is, and we can change this directly in the browser, is index.php, and then with a question mark to indicate a query, and it's Q equals, Q meaning query. And if we visit this page, I'm reloading the page with this address, we see the same page loaded. So every page that we visit in Drupal is going to look like this. And if you have the clean URL setting turned off for Drupal, this is what you'll see in the address bar. So what Drupal will do is take this path and then reference an index that it has that assigns every path a function call. And if it finds that path in the index, then it calls that function and expects that function then to tell Drupal what to do next. Most of the time what it'll do is supply some type of content to be built into the final content page. However, it can also tell Drupal to go to another page or present an error message like access denied or page not found. Every module determines which paths are assigned to which callback functions. And all that data is stored in a database table called menu router. Let's go ahead and take a look at that table real quick. I'm going to jump to my MySQL management application. This one is called SQL Pro. It's just for Mac. It's really nice. But you could also use phpMyAdmin or Navicat if you're using some other platform. So this is the full database for my Drupal 7 install, and I've scrolled down the list of tables to this one right here, Menu Router. And on the right, we have all of the rows in this table. Now if we look at the first column, it's called Path, and you'll see as we sort of scroll down this that every item in here is a path that you can visit on your Drupal site. And if you want to know how this page is going to be built when you visit it, you can just scroll over about four columns to the page callback column. And this assigns the function to the path. So for example, if we go to admin slash appearance slash settings, we'll use the Drupal get form function in order to grab the content for this page. The menu system in Drupal is pretty powerful. And this assignment of path to callback function, while essential, is really just the tip of the iceberg. And so as we go through this video, what we're going to do is increase the complexity of our examples until we're doing things like passing parameters and arguments through our menu path to our callback functions.